critical conversation meeting about Bessie DeVos. My name is Irene Robinson. I'm a grandma of 18 grandchildren and a mother of six. I have been in Chicago all my life. I lived here all my life. This was my first apartment when I moved uh, by myself with my children. The school was not just a learning center for the children. It had uh, resources for the parents. We, we cooked there. We had um, holiday meals there with the children and the parents. We had GED classes in our school for the parents. I used to walk my grandbabies to school every day as I walked my children to the same school until every one of them graduated. But I still didn't leave the school. I was still here because that's where my heart was. I was a young parent when I moved here. And the teachers here helped me. They educated me more than what I was educated on. They, they, they nurtured me when I needed it because I was a single, single mom with five children. Anthony Overton was a good school and, and, and it had always been supported for the community and the children and the parents until the sabotage had started coming in. By the time my children started having children and my grandchildren started coming there, where it was already in plan to sabotage it, to starve it, and to close it. So when you starve the school by taking resources, by taking the maintenance work, by taking teachers and taking programs out of the school, you stop in that school to a point where there's nothing there to, for the children to receive. Because this school is underutilized now, and this school is in poor condition. That means the upkeep is in poor condition and the test scores is failing. So they used those three um, reasons to close up a school. We protest. We went to the aldermen. We went to board meeting. We did everything that a parent and her power, and their power can do. The resistance was so, no one wanted to hear about keeping Anthony Overton's open or none of the rest of the school. Who goes, Grandma? Hey, Grandma, you just cooked this up, my grandma. We fight, we still trying to fight for the school. This is one of the Overton baby friends, so you can come I see we opened diet up. Yeah, we opened diet. All the funding was taken from our neighborhood school and sucked right into charter schools, which half of our children can't go to which is not parent friendly, which is not what the parents wanted. You know what they did to um, over to them? What? Made they it made it to, um, to a workout. They, the, these people own it. They own the jump. Well, they own the whole thing, but they made the jump to a workout thing. Really? And it's not for the public. I'm finna walk over there. Don't, you know what? They gonna pay for that. They closed it down and they sold it. Oh, they sold it? They sold it. When they closed Anthony Overton and put um, half of the children in Madison and half in Burt, they sold it. So, we, that, that don't mean that we lost. That mean we gonna get a bigger and better school, right? right. And we gonna design it even better. I know right now it's looking like we ain't gonna win, but we gonna win. We gonna get those gonna schools get back. School back. That's right, my king. You know it too, right? As long as grandmama got breath in her, I'm going to continue to fight and people are going to come and more people are going to come and the more come, guess what's going to happen? We're going to get what we got, what was stolen from us. Okay? I love y'all. I have to go. Give me her. I love you. There's a silent, well, I won't say silent, invisible way that they use hate crime when they say privatizing, 
when they say close in schools. They, they use it as we're going to close to improve. But no, you're not. Privatizing was the death of our neighborhood school. The pain is still, but I know I can't stop because I have to fight. I guess I hurt in, in more than one way because I hurt for my peoples. The history of my peoples I hurt for, and I hurt for my grandchildren and children who don't have a chance of getting the opportunity. It feel like a, as a parent, we supposed to protect our children. My little, my grandbaby Mikey. After all that was over, he looked at me one day and he told me he had got so upset, he told me, you lied to me, grandmama. You told me that we was gonna get our school back and I hate going to Madison. Do you know how that made me feel? Because I couldn't, I couldn't protect them. When the school closed, our children fought it, they, they sat. They felt like they was too dumb. You know how many times I have to tell children, you're not dumb, you're smart. It wasn't your fault. You can't, that's why I called it back kings and queens. My young kids, I called them that. When you take away their self-esteem and degrade them, and it's just over and over and over, when it's gonna stop? When they close in the school, what they really saying is, we don't want your child to have an education. We don't want you in the community. And we can take these schools. And there's nothing you can do about it. That's what they really saying. Do we care if your child is gonna be in danger? No. Only thing we care about is making money even if it's off the back of your children. And this country is responsible for that.